Welcome to the People Priority Podcast, where we dig into topics that help you show up as your best self for you and your circle of influence. I'm your host, Julie Schneers, a teacher turned speaker, team culture consultant, and leadership growth coach who loves people. Join me every week for conversations that will motivate, educate, and hopefully just inspire you to grow through the power of communication, connection, and confidence. Because you and your people, you're worth it. Okay, here we are with Olivia Adkin. I am so excited to have her on our podcast today. Let me tell you a little bit about this incredible woman. Olivia Adkin was born in Arkansas and raised in New Jersey. She graduated from Quinnipiac University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Management, a minor in Sports Studies, and a Master of Business Administration with a concentration in Supply Chain. Olivia holds certifications in Society for Human Resource Management, CP, Project Management, CAPM, Association for Supply Chain Management, CPIM, Greenbelt Six Sigma, a Tableau and Analysis Badge, an Advanced Google Analytics Badge. She does it all, you guys. Olivia is an entrepreneur and author who has worked in numerous industries, including professional sports, healthcare, supply chain, of course, finance and education. Olivia's Business Achieving Success, LLC, has multiple divisions, including her book, Achieving Success in Career Development, her podcast, Achieving Success with Olivia Adkin, a coaching speaking division, her webinar series, Authentically Achieving Your Mix and More. She got so much knowledge that folds straight into what we talk about on the People Priority. Olivia, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be able to talk to you today and share our knowledge. Yeah, me too. Okay, so I know we talked about your achieving success business and you had a ton of information to offer knowing that we are coming from the perspective of communication, connection, confidence. Give me a key that you think is crucial when you speak to businesses. A key to me, there's a few different avenues we can go through, but especially in dealing with people and communicating is having empathy and being able to listen. I think it's really important to take that step back and be able to really hear what the other person is saying and try to put yourself in their shoes before making any kind of decision. Oh, that's a good tip. Okay. So walking down the listening path, because I think I think that can be hard for people to do, especially leaders who get in this, I've got a go, go, go mentality. I, I have to make sure people understand my vision. You turn into someone who's got to talk a lot. So having to put the brakes on it and listen sometimes can be a, a flip your focus kind of deal. What tips and tricks do you have there? When it comes to kind of flipping your focus and making sure you're actually listening to what is being said. You know, one thing I always say, sometimes silence is the biggest speaker in the room. Mm. And so when you can be silent and not feel like you have to say something as a leader, that gives you the availability in your mind to actually listen to what's being said around you. And there's kind of two folds to that. You know, the other people who are being silent in the room, if it is a space where there's multiple people in the room, there might be a reason why they're being silent. So knowing to ask the question, what's going on? What is your input? And picking up on those minor things are just as important as listening to the person who has something to say. And then when you're in a room, just one-on-one -on -one with someone, taking that step back and listening to them, but trying to listen to the point they're saying. And mm. not just the words coming out of their mouth, because you have to be able to ask that follow up question as well. You know, we'll take a yearly review meeting with a colleague or an employee, for example. You know, there might be things someone might be cautious about saying, and you have to try to read between those lines and know the right question to ask to get the answer you're looking for. And that takes listening. That takes not talking, but observing. I love your point about observing when people aren't speaking in the room and being thoughtful enough to ask why. Mm -hmm. You know, That's there's, powerful. yeah, there, 
there's multiple reasons I've been quiet in a room because I've started to shut down at times. There's mm -hmm. definitely meetings I've been in where I've tried to say something and get my point across and I'm being shut down by someone else. Not necessarily a leader, we're equals, but it just keeps getting shut down. So I've gotten to a point sometimes where I've said, okay, quietness is key. I'm not going to get my point across. Let me just try to listen and figure out where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. So then I can say what I'm trying to say on their level. But there's also those times where we're not perfect and you just shut down and you have nothing else to say. And you're then out of touch with the meeting. You don't care what's going on. You know, one-on-one -on -one conversations where you're like, I'm not being heard. So now I'm shutting down. And the mm -hmm. right question to ask then to the other person is, how, how are you feeling? What, what's going on? What are your thoughts? And if it's in a group setting, sometimes it's like, you know, if we're in a round table and I have a colleague next to me asking that colleague of, what is your opinion on that? Or how did that make you feel? Because it's sometimes the small questions that get them reengaged and feel comfortable enough and that vulnerability to say, you know what, this is really what I'm thinking and feeling. And sometimes it's just continuously asking the question why or what's going on. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think that your point about key questions is beautiful. And I love that you said, how does that make you feel? Because that, I mean, that's not always in the forefront. In business meetings, that's not always the forefront of our minds when you're sitting with your team because sometimes it's a, we have to check this box meeting. Mm -hmm. So how you feel about it might not necessarily be a game changer, but it might be a direction changer. So you might have to kind of shift a little or at least let your people be heard uh, if they're feeling like it doesn't fit. So I love that you said, how does that make you feel? And it's a really important question to ask and something that's very important to gauge in any environment, right? So I am the president of the ASCM, which is a supply chain professional organization of Connecticut. Um, that is the chapter I run. And I also sit on international boards within ASCM. But my board currently for the state of Connecticut chapter, I'm the youngest at 28 years old as the president. But I have people ranging in age from a little older from me to their late 70s. So I have to be able to understand how that all those people communicate and really trying to make sure that everyone's being heard. And it is sometimes as simple as saying, how do you feel about that? What's your opinion? Because yeah. you, everyone's voice matters. And when you take into account that everyone might not feel that vulnerability to say it and making them feel comfortable enough to say it is the game changer. You know, there's, yeah. there's been multiple times where I've been in meetings and it actually happened today. I was in a meeting and we were going left and I was like, actually, if we're taking that idea, why don't we do it this way? And it totally turned the projection of what we're going to be rolling out but it is a better way and a better solution. So being able to listen to all the ideas can save you time, yeah. can save you money. And it, there's just a lot of benefits to it. And a good leader does listen because mm -hmm. you're only as good as your team. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Something else I want to point out that you said that I think is crucial to good leadership is when you said, I just want to sit and listen to learn their perspective. Maybe I'm sitting in the I disagree zone or the I don't know why we would possibly roll it out that way zone. But the mindset of I'm going to sit here and stop talking and just listen because maybe I've got something to learn. That shift of perspective, that's wholesome. That creates team culture that people want to stay in. Yeah, exactly. And the thing I always say is when I go into any environment, whether it's education, supply chain, writing my book, or whatever it might be, when people come to me and go, okay, feel free to run with any idea and change anything or whatever the conversation might be, I always say, first, I need to learn your process and how you guys operate, whether that's as a team, 
whether that's your procedures and processes in place to get things done, tasks done. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, without learning why we do something, you can't change it and better it. Yes. And then why would they follow you? Right. If you didn't at least learn in a respectful way what they've been doing for who knows how long. Right. And there might be a deeper reason that from looking at something from the outside, you're like, Absolutely. why Why are you doing this? This makes no sense. And then when you learn, you know, the steps they take and you try to potentially implement something else, you're like, wait, that skips information you need. And I always do that too. You know, when I get my teams together, I always say, okay, what ideas do you have? I say, this is the process we do, especially if I'm onboarding someone into a world I know about. I'll say, this is what we do. Feel free to give me your perspective on the ideas, but then also feel free to not jump in and change everything. If you want to understand it first i'm totally fine with that do not think i'm bringing you in here to start making changes tomorrow but also on the flip side if i am bringing someone onto my team because of their knowledge i have had conversations where they're like olivia is this okay with you do you want this and i'm like you're the knowledge expert i brought you on because i trust that you know what you're doing so take the lead which is leadership also to know that your people are ready to roll out and lead in their zone. Okay. So now I'm curious because I, there's a a school district uh, that I have actually done some work with that they rolled in a new principal for one of their mini schools. And the new principal came in and was very proud of all that she had to offer. And before she learned anything about her people, about their why they've been doing things the way they've been doing them, about their problem points, about where pressure was sitting, about what they thought made them successful, she just started changing things. And she basically said, if you don't like it, quit. And of course, the team culture right now in that one school in that district is struggling which so now i'm I'm interested in all the things that you said out loud. What would you say? to those people. I think there's room on both sides, right? Absolutely. Always. Right. Right. So right off the bat, you know, if I was in that room and that was said, I'm not always the quietest person in the room, you know, I'll be, I'll be that devil's advocate. I will. If you ask any of my friends, they'll be like, Olivia's the loud one. She'll just say it. And you know what? That's okay. You know, sometimes it's good to be the leader, even among your peers, not maybe positional wise, whatever it might be, but sometimes you have to be that leader, even within your level of peers to say, you know what, I'm okay with getting uncomfortable. I think that's one of the key things. Any any success is get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And so I've always been the one that sometimes does challenge, you know, Mm -hmm. the perspective of like, You know, if I was in that meeting, I would have said, okay, why are we coming in and changing everything? And she might have been told by higher ups, you know, this is the data. This is what's happening. You have to come in and change everything. And she's feeling the pressure. And now she's feeling like I have to come in and I have no time to wait. Absolutely. And then other people who are on her team under her might feel like, okay, now I have the space to understand why she's coming in so strong and I can help her make those changes in an impactful way while still feeling like I'm being heard and listened to without understanding, like I said, both sides of it and having that transparency, that's where the disconnect happens. So I always say from a leader's perspective, it's asking those challenges, challenging questions sometimes of, why are we making all these radical changes if, you know, what, is there a reasoning behind it? And then listening to it and saying, okay, now I understand. How can I support you? And here are my ideas to do so. Never want to come in and be like hands yes. in the air. Yes. And I that's- think that's where it comes from. I think changing the culture immediately can be very detrimental 
not just to the employees where now they're not feeling validated. Now that they just want to leave. But it also can be very important to the growth of the organization as yeah. well. Yeah. And and feeling, I mean, we all want to feel valued and needed. So yes. what does that look like? And that's the important part of the conversation is understanding how everyone also feels valued and heard. And that's it. You just said it. The important part of the conversation. You, you have to have communication in that space. Mm -hmm. and, th and that's the thing. You also have to understand. And I've had this conversation so many times. You have to understand how everyone likes to be led. Right. A good leader knows how to lead. You might have people around you who communicate differently. There might be some people who thrive in an award. You know, I'll give you this for doing this environment. Some right. people thrive in recognition. Some people thrive in being challenged. And so it's understanding how each individual feels valued, feels like they're accomplishing their goals and being seen. That's really key. When I graduated college, I was working at the Giants, but in my downtime, the coach had come to me and was like, hey, I need a manager to manage the managers. And really, he's like, they're not performing at a level that you performed at and you led the other managers while you were here. If you have some time, can you lead them? Because I'd, I'm not getting through and I know I need the help. And I was like, of course. And I got very close with the whole team. Whenever I could, I'd go to a practice or a match. And, you know, I was seeing some of the guys struggling. You know, one, the coaches just kept yelling at them. And it wasn't getting anywhere. You know, they weren't improving. They were starting to disengage. And I'm watching it. And I'm just sitting there going, okay, from I understand it. We have a sports mentality. That's how a lot of athletes are, you know, trained of the yelling at you get it done mindset. And that has changed over time, right? And a lot of pro professional teams and college teams and a lot of leaders have learned that's not just necessarily how you lead, no matter yeah. the environment. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like, you're seeing this person shrink down in themselves, right? Mm -hmm. You're seeing them not perform at all, coming in and their attitude is changing over time. Why are we yelling at everyone? And finally, after like a month of watching this, I'm like, I'm trying to gauge if like maybe the player's just having a bad week. Yeah. You know, basically I'm like, okay, there's like three guys here that you can tell are just like done. Like they are checked out. There's no anything going on. Yeah. And I realized what they really wanted. One guy in particular just wanted to be recognized. He wanted to be friends with everyone and he just wanted to make everyone feel good and feel recognized. I love that because really what you're pointing out is the power of connecting. Like you mm -hmm. have to have enough information to know what he needed, right? Which means you are building a relationship of some sort. You're making a connection as a leader with that individual so that you know what it is they need. But you know what props to you for volunteering your time to uh, your old team? Because that's, that's a neat connection that you gave to them. That was neat. Yeah, and it's one of the things I would say, never forget where you come from. Right? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. So for for me, you know, as you, you kind of said in the intro, as someone who's 28, I've lived like 500 different lives already, some of which I do at the same time. And I, I look at connecting with others as the biggest strength you can have, right? Never know the person walking into your life today, how they can affect yeah. you long term so build that connection and you know keep it as someone who can be a friend not just look at the give and takes of it and when you start to build upon that you can end up getting friendships colleagues that no matter where you might shift will have your back will support you will stand by you so for me I keep in contact with the players who I works with at the Giants and some of the front office staff. My students who I was in contact with me, they have all my personal information so that 
even though I might not be teaching anymore, you need something or you need help, you're struggling in some area, know you can connect with me in LinkedIn. Know you have my email address. Because sometimes accessibility as a leader is a thing that makes you mm-hmm. more relatable. That's a good nugget. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and I've witnessed that. You know, when people feel like they actually have a connection with you and can be yes, to you. Me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've witnessed that too. I love that. I love that you pointed that out. So to the leader, Shu says... Connections and building relationships with my team is not what we're here for. It's work. We're going to keep it professional, which I, again, I want to reiterate, and I do this when I speak about it too. Like there is a line between building relationships in the office and keeping them professional and unprofessional. I'm a hundred percent aware of that. I'm not saying that anyone should, should cross that line, but I am saying if you are not accessible, like you said, if you're not accessible or you don't feel accessible, you don't feel helpful, you don't feel like you've been invested in as an employee, that that lack of connection and that lack of relationship can be detrimental. But what do you say to a leader who just thinks that relationship building and connecting is not necessarily their job? I would ask to challenge yourself in the aspect of what do you want out of your team? What growth do you want out of your department? What are your goals? Because when you start to take a step back and look at those things, you realize you can't be doing it without making your team feel the importance of it, the need for it, but the need for them to contribute as well. And again, like you said, it's not necessarily, you know, I'm a big person of boundaries. Don't get me wrong. I've sat here and said, you know, make your make yourself accessible, you know, all these different things. I'm not going out to my staff either, you know, my my team and saying, like, what did you do this weekend? Right. You know, you right. know I'm not I'm not asking them for the inner workings of that. But at the same time, if one of my someone, whether it's someone who's on my team or a friend of mine, you know, one of their family members just died. Feel like you can right. me. So you yes. have the grace. Yes. And I think it's also about setting boundaries in the same ac- aspect of, yes, you want to be accessible. But what I always say is you can text me. You can call me. I give out my cell phone number to everyone. Um, You can email me. I give them literally everything. It's their comfort level. But also if it's a, you know, I work with people from all different time zones. So if it's 1 a.m. my time, but it's 8 p.m. your time. Sure. Kudos for you for working. And especially with work at home environments, we can hop on and hop off at different times. But also don't expect me at 1 a.m. my time to necessarily pick up that phone or text and start working or answer you. Now, when yeah. I see it first thing in the morning, I'll read it and I'll comprehend my thoughts and I'll respond to you. But knowing that, hey, feel free to text me. But if it's like one or two in the morning, you might, right, you might not get that response. And then understanding that that's the reason, they'll, they'll understand why I'm not getting back to them. Yeah. And they'll be like, okay, you know, on a Friday afternoon, I try not to have meetings. I go, everyone, when you're done doing your stuff and I want the same respect that when not everything's checked off my box, I can go home and start enjoying the weekend. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. So it's that give and take too is understanding yeah. both sides. Yeah. yeah, but still having boundaries. I'm with you mm-hmm. on that. 100%. I love that. Okay, so I I love being able to wrap up a show with the three takeaways. So if you can take everything that we talked about today, narrow down what are three takeaways that you hope we have from this podcast today? What are your three? My first one would be, be a leader that listens and asks the right questions. My second one would be, be accountable and make sure everyone is being transparent and feeling comfortable enough to share. And then my third one is, setting those boundaries, but also making everyone feel safe enough around you to Mm. be able to come to you. 
Those are good. Those are great takeaways. Thank you so much. You've shared so much wisdom. And I, I feel like there were so many good golden nuggets. I hope for everyone listening, you got to hear some incredible nuggets. And even if those nuggets are great and you want more, she has a book, Achieving Success. So check us because she's got more to offer than she gave us today. Thank you so much for giving your time. Okay, so last but not least, what would you say is your very favorite quote? And I would love for you to give us a challenge for the week as we roll out. So my quote, in the words of Walt Disney, because I am a massive Disney person, is laughter is timeless, imagination has no age, and dreams are forever. Mm. So always feel like you can laugh and enjoy the time and be in that moment and be present, as well as don't forget to think outside the box and challenge yourself and have those dreams and those goals for your future. Yeah. And then that kind of goes into my challenge of the week of as a leader, whether it's among your peers and your family in a work environment, try to be empathetic and listen to what others are saying before reacting. It's a perfect challenge for what we heard today. Thank you for being present with us today, Olivia. And thank you for those listeners who've been present with Olivia and I today. Thanks for listening and being my people. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, hook me up with a five-star review wherever you're listening right now. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the People Priority Podcast. So you don't miss out on more tips, tricks, and important reminders. All right, I'll see you next week.